And our next presenter is Dr. Claire Becker, who I have the pleasure of working with at the National Collaborative Center for Determinative Health. Claire, you can see Claire's questions on the screen. Claire's going to be talking to us about really how we keep an equity approach at the heart of our public health responses, particularly think about public health programs. And Claire has had tremendous experience working within formal public health systems. So we thought that question about how do we get the second question, she can really provide some insight uh, into so how do health equity practitioners, all of us, get better integrated into the COVID-19 response within our own organizations. Claire, on to you. Can you hear me now? Hello, Claire. Hi there. Thank you so much. And uh, so I'm sitting in, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and um, I have, as you said, uh, Sume, had over my uh, long career, actually, in public health, um, many opportunities at many different levels. So these are uh, really interesting and, I think, critical questions, and I'm just going to begin by saying that the folks on the line would really have some, uh, I think, very, very valuable things to contribute. So please start typing, and we're watching it with great interest. So I think um, the first question is interesting. How can public health programs uh, keep an equity approach at the heart um, of uh, how we adapt and plan and respond and, and as we move into recovery? Because we all, every one of us knows when we've been in an emergency or urgent kind of situation, there is that phase that comes very quickly in recovery, and often we don't spend enough time really thinking about that and planning for that. So I think the question is very critical, and I think maybe every day, every hour of the day or whatever, standing back and asking ourselves that question, did we? Did we, in fact, keep an equity approach, an equity lens, if you will, an equity set of questions right at the heart of how we're planning, how we're responding, and how we're, we're uh, thinking about the way forward. Um, and I think that's public health responsibility. And I think all of us have to provide that leadership, even if it feels uncomfortable. And Angela, I really, really appreciated the, uh, you reminding us of those teachings, uh, because we need to be honest. We need to present that. Uh, that uh, perspective, if you will, in an honest, straightforward, and uh, uh, with courage, but also with humility. So I think that's the first thing would be just don't shy away from it. Bring the words, bring the questions um, to the table. Um, and I think the second thing would be for us to be at those tables. Um, and if you're not at the table, find out who is at those planning tables. We saw in the responses yesterday that many of you are at planning tables, you're at equity tables, vulnerable population tables. But find out who's at those other tables. Who's a, a friendly, if you will, or an open or willing listener that could actually bring your voice, if you can't get to that table, that could actually bring your voice to that table. Um, so thinking at multiple levels, I think, is really important. Tapping into our relationships. Um, talking to communities, talking to those that are working with communities, being that bridge really with a foot in the community as a public health practitioner and in that more formal organization I think is really, really important. And that, so use those relationships, use those connections to the community, use those connections to people like, like Angela uh, that uh, you know, know the communities, know, know how, they're, how they're struggling, what they're thinking about, how those messages may or may not be uh, uh, equitably uh, conveyed. I think not to be afraid to bring your knowledge, so whether that's the uh, science, the community development knowledge, your community knowledge, um, but also to bring, um, not to be afraid to bring what you know to be true. You've seen it, you, you work with it, uh, you're, you're in those communities, you know where uh, those equity issues are, 
And if it's not received the first time in a good way, if it sort of bounces off of whomever, try somebody else or try someone else to get that message uh, through. I think that uh, the other thing is that we need uh, clear, consistent guidelines. I know there's many uh, working individual organizations, whether they're health or social, uh, developing those guidelines, developing those uh, messages, um, whether it be about hand washing, or whether it be about uh, physical distancing or social distancing. Um, but they need to be consistent. So we need to be collaborating at multiple levels to get those messages out because you don't want them to be um, confusing and you want them to be able to be used by those who uh, need to be able to use them. Um, so I think uh, the second one is how can equity practitioners get better integrated into the COVID-19 response within uh, public health uh, organizations? I'm hoping that you are. I'm hoping that you're able to make your presence felt. I'm hoping that you can bring that unique expertise and lens that you're able to ask those uh, perturbing, if you will, or critical questions. Um, and I think uh, offer to be helpful, offer to, to bring your knowledge and your, and your science to that table. Um, and, you know, maybe be a bit pushy in terms of what you have to bring to that table. So that would be, I think, I'm going to stop there, Sume, and uh, give the others a chance to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire. And you're talking about uh, that last question. I thought I would share an example which a participant, they may be on the line, so you're about to hear it on words, um, shared as they registered. So one person shared a really great example that they were part of the local emergency operations center and also part of the social vulnerability team. So it seemed like in that case, uh, they were able to help bridge make those links. Uh, we did hear in some of the responses, for those of you on the line, uh, that that's not happened consistently across the country. Right? So uh, I think that last piece and your suggestions there about how that could happen more consistently are really great. So thank you, Claire. 